Connor this year has been working on the basically an independent study, advanced studies in engineering. So he took Dracula one as a freshman, and he took has taken both the engineering classes. And since he just likes hanging out in my room, we had to find something else for him to do. Um, so he, I'll let him tell you all the things he's done. So he's been doing advanced studies in my class this semester. Um, so part of the requirements of advanced studies is then you present and tell somebody else about them. So, come. Good introduction. Okay, uh, most of you guys know me. Uh, around school, uh, senior. As Ms. Piper said, four-year engineering student, taken every class and then invented some along the way. So this presentation today will be basically about 3D printing the future. So it starts off, what is 3D printing in general? What is it? So 3D printing is using a piece of plastic, something like this, a roll of plastic, really echoey. It's called PFT plastic. I don't know exactly what that stands for, but it's basically weed whacker cord, a fancy weed whacker cord. This is used through an extrusion head, comes in, the wire comes in down here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. The wire doesn't. Now I got it. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so this 3D printer filament gets extruded through a little head down here. This tip gets roughly 300 degrees Celsius, um, give or take 700 degrees Fahrenheit which then melts this plastic and moves around and basically it prints. So in the, as you can see here, they're printing Yoda. It's just a little, the head goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, goes layer by layer. It's like a printer, regular printer. It goes layer by layer, then drops down, does another layer, drops down, does another layer, continues until you walk away with a 3D object. Um, a lot of companies use this for a thing called rapid prototyping is instead of if you need a part for, I don't know, let's say a car or a machine or anything to that effect, their old process was they design it, send it off, get it manufactured and hope it works. Comes back, if it doesn't work, then they have to start all over, redesign it, yada, 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 lots and lots of money. So with the 3D printers, it really opens up a whole new world because they can design it, then print it, and see if it works. And if it works, send it off for manufacturing. If not, no harm, no foul. They cost them probably five cents in materials. So another great thing about it is it's relatively fast. If you think about it, you're creating something from absolutely nothing. You're creating anything that you can imagine, anything that you need, anything with this plastic just comes out of nowhere, basically. So, leads me into what are the uses for 3D printing? These are a growing field in the medical field. They're very growing. And as you can see, some of these are a little disturbing, but that's human nose. Used for plastic surgery, used for surgeries, things to that effect. They are really good for, these 3D printers are really good for basically anything. Is in the medical field, no injury is exactly the same. So if somebody breaks their nose a different way, you know, there's no exact way how to fix that. Or plastic surgeons, that, that is a plastic surgery tool they actually printed, which is kind of strange. But they could basically print whatever kind of nose that they wanted or anything to that effect. This right here is a human skull. It's a, well, it's a representation of a human skull, is basically they can take, if somebody's skull was bashed in or broken or anything to that effect, they can take these 3D printers and print a new skull that will last them a lifetime, basically. And another use that people have used them for 
is the human jaw. It's a very complex thing. And it, it's, it's, it's unique to everyone. So the way that they can do this is they can take old measurements and they can take old x-rays and measurements from you and create a personalized jawline, basically. Some other uses for it is cars. That is the world's first 3D printed full-size car. It runs and it works and it drives and it's everything a car is that you need and it's fully 3D printed, which is pretty cool. Is the thought and the idea of you can get up, walk outside, and you can print your own transportation to work, if need be. This has a little funny story to it. A guy up in the mountains, I don't know where, I forgot where, a guy up in the mountains wanted to build a house. The builder said, we can't build a house up there, it's too far. You'd have to spend more money building a road up to the house, then we could build the house. He said, no, I don't like that. So. He took this and he basically, he designed a giant 3D printer that prints in concrete and fiberglass. That prints and you can print, as you can see, a full-sized house in under 24 hours. Some other uses for it that have been exploited throughout the last few years is food. It's a very strange, strange thing. This is somebody printed a pizza it's a little strange actually first it lays down a layer of dough then it lays down a layer of sauce cheese and then it gets baked it's pretty cool that you could just click a button it's almost like jetson's jetson like you could just click a button and print whatever you want this is hershey hershey chocolates decided that why not let's let's make a 3d printer that prints in chocolate so they did that's one of the first things that they printed just very complex and very Pretty cool, actually. So, the RC car. This is my RC car that I started off with. Is it's, it's, it's meant for racing. I go and race on the weekends, have a blast with it. Um, it's a four-wheel drive car. So what it means is your motor right here spins a differential. That differential spins two other differentials, which then spins the tires. Basically what a differential is, is a drive shaft comes in here, it spins a big gear, and it goes out and spins the side gears. It's pretty simple. So that's, that's my race car before I started with this. Um, that motor will propel that car probably around 60 miles an hour. No scale, just straight up. It, it's, it's blistering fast. It's really fun. These all have full suspension geometry, full shock geometry, full steering geometry, everything. It's, it's, it's a scale car. It's a tenth scale car, is what it's called. That's the controller that I used for it, or a version of it. So starting off, Miss Piper, well, I want another class, basically. So we talked, me and Miss Dillinger talked, and talked about advanced studies. Then talked to Miss Piper, first day, said, what's my big project going to be? What's the big major project that I'm going to use and take up all my time this whole semester? It was roughly supposed to take around 20 or so weeks altogether. And I said, I have absolutely no clue. I, I didn't know. So I went home that day and I looked at my closet. That's not my closet, that's just really messy closet. Mine's, more me mine's messier than that, a little crazier. I open my closet and I see my RC car and I see hundreds of parts, hundreds of different parts, different designed printed. And I said, why not? Why can't I do that? I said, that, that's a good idea. So I brought it in and threw it out to Miss Piper and she said, go for it. Little did I know how hard it was going to be. This took a whole lot more effort than I thought it was actually going to take. This is all because of one little messy closet. So the parts of this. It took me roughly about a hundred hours, give or take, to design every single part and print every single part. So it was a very large endeavor. Very large actually. 
And this is just an animation of some of the parts. There are a lot more that are actually right here that I didn't include for basically the video couldn't take it. So we'll just watch that. So this is just it exploding out of all the different parts being pulled, pulled apart. And so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And then we have this one of everything getting put back together. So all these pieces and all these different parts and stuff were anyway, basically were existing parts to a point. Um, I took, in for time's sake, I took a lot of the differentials. I made it a two-wheel drive car instead of a four-wheel drive car. So it only needed one differential, which was in the back. And I didn't bother messing around. There's a big case right there that goes around the differential that holds it. It's very, very well engineered and I couldn't really print one very easily or design one, actually even, even at all. So these are many of the parts. I took existing parts and put them into the computer, designed them myself, and then modified them heavily, heavily modified them so they would actually print, so they'd work, so they'd be very structurally sound, so they'd actually function as actual parts. Ooh, or not. So here are just some of them just blown up from that little one. We have right here, first off, is the steering. Is that was probably the hardest piece and the most prototypes and everything was just these two pieces right there hooking together. So basically these two pieces I had probably around six or seven different prototypes of them working and trying to end up steering because that's the whole point of it is to just steer. There's little axles right there that just pivot so that can turn. That was probably the longest. That piece probably took me mm, probably about five hours in total of everything of testing, printing, designing, everything just to get it to work. This is part of the steering. It's it's basically a cover to hold everything in. And I put our, our logo, Central Cabarrus, on the middle of it just because I like it. <laughs> and down here is something called an A-arm. It is one of these pieces that go, that go right here. There's four of them. All four of them are different. It's called an A-arm because supposedly it looks like an A. I don't, I don't believe it, but anyway. So up here we have just a basic mud guard. If I wanted to go out and race one of these or something to that effect, it just stops all the mud from coming from these wheels onto the back here, into the shocks, into all the, that, the innards of everything. Right here is another view of the steering, just a little bit better of a view, is it pivots along these two axes and that gets pulled, pulled and pushed by the steering servo in the middle which in turn steers the wheels. This is the back end. It's actually fairly blatantly simple, is you have an axle running and you have a shock. Basically all it is. This is the front end. This is a thing called a shock tower. It's just so it holds the shocks up right there. We have, this is a differential case of sorts, not really, of the front. It's just something that I use to take the place of a differential case, basically to bolt everything onto. This is right up here on the front, right there. And this is the rear wheel. This is just a kind of like an inside view of what it would look like, what it looks like just blown up some more. And the mess ups. There's, in anything, there's always something that goes wrong, every time. These are just some examples of them. Um, right here we have a few braces, steering components, um, axles, or not axles, excuse me, axle holders. Um, that's the drive gear that went right here. That one broke fairly last minute. 
and then we have some steering components that just never ended up working. There are countless other ones that I just do not have with me because I just threw them out because I was done with them. <laughs> so the challenges is it was a lot. It was a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort, which I really enjoyed. It was fun for me, but it took a lot. Throughout everything in this car, it was, it was a bunch. It was a bunch of time, just, just infinite time spiral. There, there's really no emphasis of the problems, of the printing problems that we had. The printers broke when I needed to print something, or I'd hit the gas and it'd break. Or, you know, there's just so much besides time, and it was very challenging. But besides that, it was getting everything to work right. It seems pretty simple. But if you take one thing, like, okay, let's say a chair, and you needed a piece for a chair, I could print that. that that'd, that'd be the easiest thing ever. You know, it, it doesn't have to work. It just, it's, it's part of a chair. But if you get two, three, four, multiple pieces working together in unison, that's when it gets very challenging with you get tolerances, you get rubbing, you get friction, you get so much other stuff that you have to account for that takes, takes a lot of time. And that's, that's really the majority of this is designed it was easy. But then getting it to work and getting it to function, getting it to do what I want to, that's a different story. So driving or running, let's see if it works. Or it's not going to. Okay, so this is a video that I made because it was done and I felt like it needed to be shown. <laughs> um, we did this on a, me and Montel, we couldn't get our cameras to work, yeah, any of our cameras in our houses. So we had to use a phone, so that's why it's a little iffy on the video, but this is just it driving in my driveway around the house and driving around. You can see the turn radius isn't great, but it took a while. <laughs> and there's really no sound to it because it's, it's electric, so it's fairly quiet. And then I included some more pictures. I didn't include them in the PowerPoint because they're here, and I knew I was going to show this. So this is just kind of a 360 view of it blown up in great detail. Now, all the pieces in white that you see on these are 3D printed. Um, I had to interchange them with regular, the pieces that came on the actual car a lot because I couldn't print a chassis. It's too big. It's not strong enough. Things to that effect. I couldn't print electronics, shocks, can't do that. But these are just some, some of the pictures. At, that's the back end, the rear end. That's the steering components. That's the steering servo and the speed controller, the thing in red. And then the shock tower. Those are body posts. I didn't bring the body, so I took them off because they just are there. <laughs> normally a big body fits over everything. That's normally what we race with as well. So there's that. Okay. Okay. So what does the future hold with this magical 3D printing. This, basically, this you can print the world. You can print absolutely anything that your mind desires. If you say, I don't know, lose a screw, or if you lose something to a light switch, if you lose a little oven knobs, you can print that. That's the small thing. Right now we can do that. But in the future, the number one job 
according to a leading university, in I believe it was 20 years, is a thing called a 3D printer technician. This will be a person that comes with a specialized 3D printer in the back of their van, and you say, I lost my remote. He would go in, he'd click print, and he'd make a new one. He'd print a new one within a few minutes. He would, he or she, would basically be able to print anything in your house that you see at any time, at anywhere. That is the future. That will be the future of 3D printing. There is a new thing called 5-axis 3D printing. Normally, a 3D printer like uh, what we have and the normal ones go on three axes. It's the X, the Y, and the Z. The 5-axis 3D printing has those same ones, X, Y, and Z, but it also has rotation around the X and the Y axis. This allows, opens up the doors to many different things. Is now you can go under in 3D print, you can go over, you, you can do anything. You can do absolutely anything with a 3D printer. So I leave you with this question is, why not? Why not print the world? Why not go through and find whatever you need and print the world? Just why not? There you go. And then, yeah, anyway, anyone have any questions? Anything to that effect? Or do you just want to see this drive? See? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know, actually. I just take it day by day and figure out what I want to do that day. You know, I, I go in and what am I going to do today? That's, that's always the fun of this, is I can do basically whatever I want, whenever. Um, the cover's actually too big to print, and there'd be really no way that I could print that, is I'd have to print it in so many different pieces that it wouldn't be structurally sound at all. Yeah, we could, we could go, go still the big one. Wait until it goes through its little process. So, you're still heading automotive engineering is your. Yes. That's goal. automotive mechanical, really, is what I'm wanting to go into now. So, this is just a little. It really works. It really does. See if I can turn. Oh, I can't turn. I don't have reverse, so if you could just kick that away. <laughs> But this thing can go fairly fast. It's, like I said, it could go probably around 60, even with that motor in this setup. So that was just barely quarter throttle. I mean. That's three quarters throttle. You know, so that's not even close to being it. I think I'll blow the tires off if I just floor it. So, again, what I leave you with here today is is why not? Why not print the future? Why not go into the world and why not print anything? Print everything. Anything you lost, anything you desire, is you could be able to print it in the future. It is the next step. And it is here. And we all have access to it.